All right, hi everybody, my name is Nathan Lefevre. I'm the Equipment Room Manager here at CMI. Uh, and today we're gonna look at one of our light kits that we have available. This is the Aperture 120D three light kit. So inside this black case, there's three Aperture 120Ds, which are um, a fairly medium range powered light. Um, and they're great for uh, lighting you know, smaller spaces or even medium sized rooms. So let's go ahead and open it up and take a look at it. One of the things that trips students up most on this case is how many stinking latches there are. There are one, two, three, four, five, six in total. Uh, and then there's these little tabs on the base to open them up. Um, but once you get into it, you get to see all of the stuff we have to offer. So obviously there are three of each of these guys. So this is the light, the head unit itself. Um, they all have this plastic safety cover on the front of them um, to remove that. Uh, if you want to get in a little bit closer there's this little latch here all you got to do is pull this guy back towards the back of the light and then uh, twist this guy that would be to the clockwise direction and then you can pull it out um, i always like to keep these guys in the case and then they'll live in there and then whenever you put the light back in the case then that goes on there. Um, what I don't want you to do is turn the light on at all with that on there. It's plastic and it's right next to the COB, the chip on board LED that's on here, and it'll melt it. So be careful with that. So I'm gonna set that guy aside for a second um, and go through some of the rest of the components that are in here. Um, next to every light, there is a ballast. So this is what actually um, powers the light and controls it as well. These all have a dial on here for dimming it from all the way from zero to 100%, and then of course a power button. And then these also have built-in effects like lightning or paparazzi or anything like that if you want to venture into those. Um, probably won't get into them in this video, but they are fairly simple to control there. And then between the ballast and the head of the light is a little XLR cable. So this has red, um, what would you call it? not branding, but it has red rings on here uh, to show that it's gonna connect between the red port here and the red one on the bottom of the light, as well as the power cord. So it's got your standard, you know, three prong Edison cable, and then goes to a locking Nutrik connector that plugs into the bottom of the light. So those are all of those components to get power from the wall to the light itself. Um, next thing that's in here, and we can actually go ahead and start building it up from here, are the tripods. So three lights, three of everything in here, including the tripods that you need to build them on. So this bottom knuckle here, you just loosen that, pull the legs apart. And then with light stands, a good rule of thumb is to always have the spreaders for the stands, that's these parts here, parallel to the ground. That makes the stand have the widest base possible and it's going to be the most sturdy so you know if i show an example of the not right way to build this i've got a smaller base here and you can see you know i'm, I'm exaggerating for uh, effect but this will be a little bit less stable uh, and you could even go as far as to not have any of the legs touching and it's just the center post and like you know a good stiff breeze will knock your light over so safety first on building it have those spreaders parallel to the ground okay so from there we can go ahead and put our light on top of this so i'm going to grab the one that i had out before so this is a baby pin that's a pretty industry standard size thing the bottom of the light has a baby receiver and then all you have to do to mount the light to that is loosen the yoke which is this big black lever on the side and then that will drop down tighten that back up and then make sure that this uh, knob here is unscrewed so that way this hole is all the way open and then that guy should just slide right on there and then we'll tighten that on there like so okay and then I'm gonna grab the ballast next so the unfortunate part about how these are designed even though these are the mark two of this light um, they're still not a great place to hang this ballast they you know include like this little red latch here that you can hang stuff off of i don't like doing it there because it's not quite big enough um, so any one of the knuckles on here is a pretty okay place to do so even the larger one um, 
what I would like for you to do when you're carrying this thing around though. See how this just kind of dangles and will hit anywhere on the stand. Even if I hang it off of apertures like denoted spot here, it still freely dangles. On the back of this ballast is a V-lock battery plate. So these are battery powerable. Um, but if that, you know, carelessly you're moving this light around, um, bumps into the stand, there's a chance that one of those plastic parts on there can break. So anytime you're picking the slide up and moving it around, just kind of like grab it around both the stand and the harness for the ballast here and move it around that way. And it's going to be much less prone to getting broken. So I'm going to hang this back here on the stand a little bit lower. And then let's start plugging things in. So I'm going to grab that XLR cable from before. Again, this is the one that has the red rings on either end of it. This cable is not directional, so the ends are the same on both of them, so it doesn't matter which way you go. But it's going to go from the red port on the bottom of the light. All you got to do is match up. There's a little cutout in the XLR cable that's going to match up with the release lever there. And just plug it in until it clicks. And then on the ballast, same kind of thing. So I'm just going to line that cutout up with the release lever and push it in until it clicks. Just like so. Can you show the cutout again? Sure, yeah. Yeah, it's real small. So there's a little arrow on there and that'll show you where that's at. And then that guy matches up with the silver level, or, excuse me, with the silver lever on here and then push it in. That one's just really tight on there for some reason. Anyways, that guy lines up with that. Um, okay, so once we've got our ballast plugged into the head, the light itself, we need to power it from the wall. So the way I advise doing this is actually plug the end into the bottom of the ballast first before you plug in this. Otherwise, even though all of the metal connectors that are actually carrying live electricity are inside the connector itself, it's just a good idea to not have power loose in your hand if you can help it. So slide this over, make some space. Do as I say. And then this cable is a little bit tricky to plug in. Let me do it like that. It's going to go in this middle hole here. So the other two are for DMX power, uh, DMX control, which we won't worry about. Um, but the power is going to go right in the center. So the way that I've told students to do this, and it makes it pretty easy, this metal latch here is going to line up with the silver color, like the metal latch there, except off just a little bit. So it's not going straight in there, but I'm matching what it really is, is this larger block with the larger gap there. So line those two up, and it just goes straight in, and then rotate it to the right, and it'll click. So just showing that again. Line the latch up with the metal part, and then twist to latch it in place. Okay. And then I'm going to run this guy, go under the stand, and then I've got a stinger here with, you know, just a normal plug on there. And I can just plug this in, like so. And then my light has power. So these don't turn on right away when you plug them into the wall. You've got to actually turn on the ballast there. Before I turn it on, I'm going to add a couple more things to the front of this light. Um, these have what's called a Bowens mount, and that is this style of mount here. So it's these three flanges sticking out around the base of the modifier. So this is uh, the reflector. This comes in the kit. And then those will line up with the three cutouts on the front of the light. So these are really, really easy to install and remove. All you got to do is line up those flanges with the three cutouts, push it straight back, and then turn to the left. So that's, I guess, the most tricky part of it is turning it to the left instead of righty-tighty. Um, and then to remove it, that silver latch that we used before to take off the plastic cover, all you got to do is pull that guy back and then turn it to the right and pull straight up. So inserting straight in to the left, and that locks it in place. So yes, you can use this light without the reflector on the front of it. It'll just have a really wide beam spread. 
this reflector will <coughs> excuse me this reflector will kind of condense it down a little bit uh, and then there are some additional modifiers in here these are barn doors and these will go on front of the reflector and then with these we can shape the light down a little bit more so mounting the barn doors is a little bit tricky um, there's this wire that's underneath the bottom of the barn doors you have to pull that out of the little notch for it and so this is going to be the bottom half and this is going to be the top half and the way you can tell aside from the wire is the top half has these little um, kind of grabby feet here those are going to grab to the outside of the rim of the reflector and all you got to do is just hang that off of those two and then the bottom will kind of kick into place and then this wire wraps around the ring and then goes back into that little notch and so now these uh, you'll know that your barn doors are on correctly if you can spin them around and they don't catch anywhere so i can spin these you know i could go all the way around and we're all good to go okay um let's see what am i forgetting i think i'm good so far so just going through kind of a checklist before turning it on i've got power coming from the wall into the ballast at the bottom and then out of the top of the ballast i've got the xlr cable going into the base of the light uh, and then i've got my modifiers on the front of it and i should be ready to turn it on so i'm going to raise this up just a little bit just by loosening that guy and i will tighten that back and then to turn it on i'm going to lift this up so we can see it a little bit better there we go i'll get out from behind the light turning it on just got to push the power button just like that and you can see if i pan this light around we have light coming out of it so again these are dimmable so right now this one's at 100 percent and if i just rotate this counterclockwise i can go all the way down to zero percent so no light output and then i can do it in one percent increments so it's very very uh you know adjustable as far as how much output you want um what you can do if you want to go to from zero to 100 quicker the faster you spin the dial the faster it will go through the value so if i go slowly on the dial it's going to change by one percent if i go quickly it's going to change by five or ten percent so you can see from zero to 100 percent and again it's got some pretty decent output for such a small light that draws very little power um, these guys are, are pretty great for lighting just about any kind of space that you'll have so i've got these barn doors on the front what i can do is i can use these to help shape and control my light uh, i think i can see that wall let me go a little farther back there we go so uh, i can move these around and instead of having just this light spreading all over the wall here i can you know cut it down a little bit make a, a shape with it instead of just wide open all right so packing these up is just the same as, as unpacking them but in reverse i'm going to start with turning off the light and then um yeah i'm going to start with removing the modifier so i'm going to take off the barn doors these don't stay on the reflector and then just collapsing them down the smaller uh, ears on the barn doors those come in first and then the larger ones second and then the little wire let's make sure that gets latched back into the spot there and then these all stack nicely next to each other like so in the case then the reflector can come off again it's just the here, let me show the camera a little bit better it's the silver latch here you pull it towards the back of the light and then rotate to the right and pull straight out these guys just stack on top of each other next to the barn doors in the case so again three of those three of those uh, to unplug the xlr cable you got to do is push the little metal latch in and pull the cable straight out okay and then these just wrap in little small wraps to be able to fit them all in the case like so and then tie with the velcro okay 
So the Velcro, and then I'm just going to set this to the side. I'm going to put the ballast in there first, and then the cables next to it. That's the best way to fit them in. Um, while I was at the case, I grabbed the little plastic um, protector for the light itself. So that's just going to mount just like the reflectors do. Go straight in with all three of those, and then turn to the left, and that'll lock it in place. Okay. I'm going to unplug my ballast from the wall, like so. And then to remove the power cable from the ballast, you just pull back on the pin and then turn it to the left to unlock it. And then gently let the ballast sit back down. And then this one is wrapped just a little bit differently. It's just kind of folded. The cable has a memory, even if it's not a good memory, of uh, how it likes to be folded. So just kind of keep it up with that. Like so. I'll tuck that end in under the Velcro. And then we'll just wrap the Velcro around the cable. And latch that guy in place. Okay. And then ballast. We'll just unhook it from this knob that I have it hanging from. And then cable for the ballast or the, the hanger for it just kind of folds up neatly next to it and then it will go in there like so and then the XLR cable kind of fits on the back side of the ballast and then the power cable just goes right next to it and there's just enough space in this case to make it work, but it should sit in there just like that. So each one of these should have ballast, XLR cable, and power cable for it. And the light itself will go in that pocket right there. So we'll just loosen the knob, pull it off, and then I will loosen the yoke and fold that back. And then these guys just go in here face first. Um, these black knobs, these actually ratchet, so if it's sitting in there at an odd angle like this, just pull out on the handle and then kind of rotate it into a good place and it'll do that. So it's not loosening anything, I'm just repositioning the handle. And then put that guy back to bed like so. Last but not least, pack up the light stand, so I'll just bring all of the risers back down, tighten the knobs, and then loosen the base, bring all the legs back together and lock this back, and there we go. So, you know, it's always a good idea to just double check that you've got everything in here before you call it a day. I've got my three light stands, three reflectors, three sets of barn doors, three lights, three XLR cables, and three power cables. And then with that, we put it to bed and close all six latches and away we go.